Hello everyone, Sunley here and welcome back to another episode of Truly Bedrock Season 1. It is episode 31 today and we are starting off over here in the dreadful, dreadful place that is the end dimension where you can barely see the ground because of the render distance. And that is because today's episode is all about getting stuff done that I've said we should be getting done for like the last 20,000 episodes. So I've actually already done a bunch of in rating on a live stream. We're going to go ahead and hit a couple more in cities at the beginning of this episode because you know I can't pass up free elytras I'm already out here I may as well just do as much in rating as I possibly can and I really don't like not being able to see the ground so I suppose we should probably hop on down there and start our journey shouldn't we so again yeah today's episode is going to be all about getting different bits and bobs done around the world it's going to be a rather varied and variety episode so hopefully you guys do enjoy and if you do maybe let me know what your favorite project is down in the comment section section below that way we can focus more on that project and have more fun in general in the series so from about an hour and a half of in rating we of course have this entire box right here and actually a substantial amount of shulker shells like three and three quarters of a stack is very very good i am super happy that they finally fixed the looting enchantment for shulkers because if you guys don't remember for a very long time shulkers were not affected by looting but now they are and it's just it's just so so nice I've also gotten a lot of iron two five elytras all of this good stuff in here besides like the wither skulls of course and then of course all of this good stuff and also two more full shulker boxes of other junk and things so overall a pretty good raid so far i have the coordinates for another four end cities which of course we're gonna go hit up real quick because again while we're out here we may as do as we may as well do as much in raiding as we possibly can Oh, you know what? I think I figured out why we're getting so many shells. I just killed one shulker that was right here and he dropped three shells. You know what? That's that's just one of the bugs that you don't need to report and that like nobody needs to know about. We'll just passively all agree to uh, not tell anyone about that one. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't even include it in the video. That's a great bug. Thank you. <laughs> Pretty sure shulkers are only ever supposed to drop two shells at maximum, so that's why I've been calling it a bug. Uh, anyway, yes, we're down here at the bottom. Now I'm going to continue raiding this place. Okay, finally, we can get out of this end dimension. But before we do that, as you guys know, you have to give some offerings to the end gateways. That way they don't corrupt the end. They don't throw you into the void or put you on infinite generating terrain screens. Uh, so yeah, just put it, put down a couple blocks. You know, be nice to the end gateway. These guys have it harsh. They're just out here in the cold, desolate end forever. And let's go ahead and see if we can actually make that pearl. We can, sweet. And that is extremely loud. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Uh, but we are back here on the main island finally we're just gonna go ahead and drop through the actual portal and then we should be back at the base okay so about all of that lovely lovely loot that we just got from the end dimension we of course have two full shulker boxes completely full of pretty amazing iron gear we're definitely gonna throw that into the end shop because that's gonna be very useful to the three new players that we have on the server of course echo soldier killer drone and jesse b so maybe they will you know invest in some iron gear or maybe they'll switch straight to diamond because we have some very very amazing diamond gear too so that's pretty awesome i'm gonna have to pick through that pretty thoroughly pick out anything that i think i should keep for myself and you know just kind of hide away for a rainy day when we do eventually fall into the void haven't done that yet hopefully we never do uh, but then of course we have all of the random junk blocks that we got from the end 48 loot chests in total, kind of a lot of rating. And then this is the box, the box that you all very much should care about. Boom, lots and lots of nice things. Elytras, 34 diamonds, five and a half stacks of shulker shells. The emeralds are completely valueless because we have a raid farm and also tons of iron and gold too. Also a couple pretty nice tools that like don't really need much before they're perfect. So that's cool. 
and yeah this is gonna be awesome i'm gonna go ahead and probably fully enchant every single one of these elytras with unbreaking three and mending and i think i probably will have enough levels for that this moment has been very very long overdue i've been meaning to raid the inn for what must be like maybe two months now yeah i've been really putting this off i'm a serial procrastinator as you guys know uh but anyway this box right here has six fully enchanted elytras in it very very shiny looking and then i only had enough levels to actually make two mending elytras but of course we have all the rest of the books that we need to make three more fully enchanted ones i believe i need like four i need like 20 or 30 more levels not a big deal i will do that in my spare time between episodes and yeah we can finally go ahead and restock this in shop it's going to be very exciting i'll probably go ahead and change up a few of the prices in here as well one stack of glass of free at his times this is super annoying okay people do this on my realms they put random stuff into the shops chests i know tis, tis tom gets away with it because he's funny but like if you're playing on a server please don't put things in the shop chests or people's mailboxes like advertisements i just want to throw that out there everybody finds it annoying but again tis tom you're totally fine because you're funny and also i i actually will go get some free glass right now thank you for the free glass <laughs> All right, this place is now fully stocked for the first time in a very long time. We have a full double chest of iron gear. There's some really, really, really awesome stuff in here, like this pickaxe right here. And yeah, there's just some great stuff in there. Definitely get that while you can. A couple dragon heads. I switched everything over to only accept pebbles because, of course, you know, before we were accepting pebbles and diamonds while pebbles were still getting rolling. But now pebbles are fully established. We basically own this entire side of the shopping district the actual good side so yeah we don't need to start accepting diamonds anymore we got all the colorful shulker boxes of doom in here and you know what? i also did get like all of these additional inner chests from the in cities themselves so may as well go ahead and put a few of those in there geez there's so many inner chests i love it full box of diamond gear a little bit of obsidian i need to bring some of the actual instone bricks and stuff over here so we can keep on selling those otherwise this place is very very nice and i'm hopeful that people will start shopping here again and now that we actually have stock also apparently new cake reviews have also come out as well so we got a new cake review for our new bone block shop clever but kind of creepy man I, I don't think he's creepy. I think he's cute. I mean, I also think that pigmen are cute because reasons. So, I mean, there you go. Just like, he's adorable. What are you talking about, Liara? Oh, jeez. Uh, but also, we got a spare sympathy cake for broke college student. <laughs> nice. I think that means that we have the highest rated shop in the entire shopping district due to that extra cake. Nice. Oh, but we didn't get an actually good score on the on the actual score. Jeez, whatever. Uh, have we made profits? Yes, we have. Very nice. Three pebbles per stack. And of course, we're giving away a free book to anyone who buys three stacks of bone blocks. Good book stock entrance difficult to use. Um, a decent score. I don't know. It's like it's scaffolding. Scaffolding is easy to use. Also, we have, have we made any more profits over here? I would assume possibly, uh, but maybe not sure. Gotta restock the books over here too. Oh, we have actually made some pebbles. Ooh, nice. That's the most profits we've ever made from this shop. The end is nigh. Beware the moon. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that seems pretty accurate. I think that's a pretty accurate prediction. And uh, yeah, the moon is pretty much completely shattered on this realm for some reason unknown. But yeah, this is pretty accurate. Nothing else to say on that one, really. From over here at the raid farm, you can really see just how broken that thing is. Like, for reals, it's kind of insane. We're definitely all gonna die pretty soon from that. Like, it's just a matter of time. Uh, but I have been using the raid farm kind of passively. As you guys know, these game, these things are completely overpowered and just amazing. Uh, so we got another couple shulker boxes full of books. And I found another couple shulker boxes full of books as well that I just kind of left over here and completely forgot about because... That's the thing that you can do when you have a raid farm. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Uh, no idea how many emeralds are in here. Not that many because I probably already took them out. Pretty decent supply of everything else. However, uh, all the other drops on the other side, not too impressive. Although we do have a ton of banners. Every single one of these guys is basically the indicator of starting a raid up there at the raid farm. So as you can see, we've kind of started quite a few raids. 
And I know we haven't been over here at the actual villager training hall for a hot minute. Uh, we're going to put this project on hold for a minute because I have no idea where to actually continue with this. We need to figure out decoration and defenses for this place. And for that, we need to meet up with Zloy and get a whole bunch more actual good villagers in here. But it's still a project that we're going to be, you know completing here sometime soon we're not completely abandoning it i just simply don't have the time to finish it at the time being and here we are back in the savannah village we are done with the shopping district and all of that in stuff for today that is a massive thing off the list of stuff that i need to do so super happy about that finally being done the next thing that i want to do is kind of a smaller tidbit it's going to add a lot of life or unlife to our village and this is something that i've been meaning to do for a very long time and that is actually getting some inhabitants into our village so the main thing that I need to do besides actually getting the guys in here is find out some way of preventing mobs from pathfinding out of the village that should be fairly simple I think signs with a layer of carpet on it will allow things to technically walk over it but they'll see that as an air block that used to be a thing that we can do not sure if that still works so what I need to do is go over to a creative testing world, do a little bit of testing and see what mobs don't pathfind over, but what the actual player can walk over just fine. And then I need to install that little system at all five entrances to the village. Once that's done, we can actually go ahead and get some inhabitants in here and name them as well. So I was getting a little bit stuck at doing this testing, but then I remembered that a couple of months ago, I did a couple of bug rock of the week episodes on pathfinding and those issues have not not been fixed yet so mobs don't technically see lower half slabs as a block that they can walk over pretty convenient for this use case as you can see we have a couple blocks right here even then they don't think they can walk over it as soon as we place down a couple blocks right there at that level then they can kind of walk across it but not really this is not a good thing to have in your worlds very laggy just constant pathfinding failures if we put a block higher then they can actually walk past just fine so as long as we have a three block gap underneath our lower half slab kind of bridge, mobs will never be able to get into our village and they'll never be able to leave either. And that's going to be pretty convenient. All right, so all the pathfinding defenses are in place and we can test it with this angry iron golem. Not sure why he's angry, probably wanting revenge for all the iron farms I've ever built, but that's beside the point. Yeah, this thing's actually working. Excellent. So he can probably still hit me. They got some very, very, very long arms like he's basically touching the ground. Uh, it's kind of abnormal anyway so yeah that's working just fine not gonna be able to get past him oh wow <laughs> i do not have a totem of undying right now that's something i should always carry around my village apparently because i need it uh but yes i did have all of the actual you know ai protection thingies in place around the entirety of the village so now we can go ahead and actually get ourselves to some guys in the village so if you saw a couple episodes ago where we gave echo soldier a tour of the truly bedrock realm and welcomed him to the roster of members then you may have noticed the part where we found like 50,000 zombie pigmen yeah these guys i think have spawned since we were actually working on our nether hub over there it's kind of like just the correct distance for a couple guys to spawn over here and then walk into unloaded chunks and then more guys to spawn over here this is a thing that happens all the time on bedrock edition but this time it's actually like super useful for us because these are going to be the inhabitants of our savannah village and everybody guessed that it was basically no secret but it's, it's still cool. I think it works out perfectly. <laughs> anyway, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be aggroing one of those guys. Hopefully they all aggro and then just making them follow us down this little area and directly into our nether portal. As you can see, I've set up barriers everywhere. So hopefully they don't go where they shouldn't. And overall, I think it should be a fairly straightforward little process. Okay, so here goes nothing, I suppose. We're going to break down these walls and then I suppose it just punched the closest guy punch and yeah that's a fair few zombie pigmen awesome so hopefully uh these guys oh wow they're actually very fast at running yeah they're quite fast at running aren't they oh man <laughs> i need to run faster why are you not angry at me come on join the crowd join the crowd we're all we're all happy fun friends over here and then you guys just need to follow me into the portal and then they should just kind of nudge each other into the portal and yeah that seems to be working just fine excellent this is actually pretty straightforward. Man, I really know how to herd a group of silence now, don't I? Oh, wow. We probably only grabbed like a quarter of the crowd, though. So I guess we'll need to do this several times over because it seems like there's a very small range for them actually aggroing at you. Like it should be 64 blocks in every direction. 
but that looked like we got maybe like 10 blocks. That's kind of strange. Oh, so it looks like you kind of got to get super close to these guys for them to really aggro at you. Like, for real, I went to the very dead center of that entire cluster of pigmen, and I only got like all of these to follow me. Hmm. It definitely seems like there are some issues with the aggroing on Bedrock Edition, and I suppose it's never really been discovered because there's never that many zombie pigmen around, at least normally anyway. I just love how they all follow you single file. It's really funny, actually. <laughs> uh, I have no idea how many actual pigmen are in there, but I think it's safe to say that's quite a few. That should be more than enough to actually populate the village, and then I'm sure like 90% of them are gonna die just randomly from like, I don't know, falling downstairs or something. It's just stupid reasons. This game loves to kill stuff randomly. Uh, so let's go ahead and actually open up this gate. I don't think these guys are aggro at me anymore, and I don't think I can actually open up that gate. Hmm, do I have any buttons? That would probably be the best way to do this, wouldn't it? So press down a button, that's gonna open that, and there we go. Are they angry at me? They might be. It's really hard to tell. Let's block that off so they don't escape. Or no, it's the button. That's right. Yeah, uh, buttons appear to be full blocks to mobs. That explains the dance party. That's actually a super easy way to get a dance party. Now that I think about it, dance parties are great. I do have two different name tags. One, of course, is Silent Wasperer, and the other one is Subscribe, because you should totally be subscribing if you do enjoy these episodes or really anything that I put out on the channel. So I guess I'm just going to painstakingly name tag these guys one at a time, and then hopefully I can get them all name tagged, and I don't think they'll ever escape the village, so that won't be a problem with them just wandering around the world. All right, so I got that secondary batch of Back to the overworld, got them all name tag now too, and they're quite the nice batch of pigos once you get to meet them. Uh, they're not all just angry golden swords and death threats or anything. They're pretty nice. They're all called subscribe and Soylent Wasper, of course. At least I'm pretty sure that they're all name tagged. It's kind of difficult to make sure of that when there's like 50 of them in a 2x2 two two area. But otherwise, yeah, that was pretty fun. I'm sure all these guys will de be deleted on a chunk border within like a week. So I wouldn't be too surprised if uh, in a couple episodes we have like no zombie pigmen anywhere. <laughs> That's just how this game goes. And it's just how it functions. And it's never going to change. So we'll have to keep our eye out for like groups of these guys where they pile up i'm sure they'll find one like fence or something to just keep jumping across you know infinitely but i'm pretty sure the village is more or less set up in a way that they shouldn't gather in too many different spots although saying that there's literally like 30 guys right here so maybe i spoke too soon <laughs> Uh, I guess I'll have to go ahead and put some slab is slabs across the top of the water. So taking a look around the village, it seems like all of the pigmen have actually, you know, spread out fairly well. There's a few small spots that they are actually getting stuck on. And I guess we should take this moment to do a little public service announcement. Light up your trees, people. There's like five different mobs up there. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'm not seeing too many places that the guys are actually getting stuck. So I think that that village inhabitant project was an absolute success. Anyway, the next thing that we want to work on is the lower laboratory. And nothing has really changed down here too much since the last time you guys saw this. I did kind of railroad this project into production because Killajoin was joining or Kill a Drone was joining, and uh, yeah, I kind of want to have something done for that intro of his, but I think this turned out fairly well. So I have mined out a little bit of extra room to this side for all of our tile blocks and stuff. That's going to be the room that we built up in today's episode. I also mined out a little bit of extra room over here. This is going to be for like our dragon egg and time machine and, you know, cursed nether portal of doom. And then we've also gotten some new, like, exhibits in here as well so starting off we have a very nice and clean zombie and that is of course is Lloyd's better half as you guys can clearly tell very very nice and clean we've of course got Songi over here too and then next up we have a zombie pigman porkins and just as a little bit of a little easter egg for you guys uh me and an old friend of mine z tater man have pretty much been you know keeping this tradition going of having a random zombie pigman somewhere in our bases in pretty much every single world of ours uh, since the very, very, very early days of the channel, I'm talking like 500 subs, that was way back when in like 2016, uh, quite a while ago. But yeah, uh, there you go. That's why they're named Porkins, because it's a funny name, and that's all you need to know. That's a thing that you now know. And next up, we got ourselves a zombie villager named Squidward. Most of these are all stream-suggested names as well. 
And next up, we got ourselves a nice little uh, zombie jockey that's actually riding a skeleton horse. Got a nice helmet, fancy chest plate, very nice. This guy can actually ride pretty much any mob in the game. So if we were to kill that skeleton horse, then he would actually go ride at the next available mob. Don't know if they ride creepers, but I really want to find out. We'll have to test that out someday. Uh, so now we have ourselves a spooky, scary skeleton as well. And of course, the funnest one is the charge creeper. You can see that uh, always giving this guy a lot of room because he's the Big Bang Theory. And I love that name. It's great. But yeah, he can't actually see through the glass, so I can get right up next to him and like poke the glass. I don't want to do that because it just sounds like a terrible idea. But yeah, he's now a thing that we have. Really awesome. I still don't trust it at all though. And then we also have Jeb over here. He didn't remove enough bugs, so now he's being experimented on. And you know what? Serves him right. So the main thing that I want to work on in this laboratory today is actually getting in a room for all of our tile blocks. All of the bedrock, all the nether portal tiles, and the other tile blocks that we're also going to be getting in future episodes. And maybe even in this episode if we have a time. Uh, but we'll get to that later. Anyway, I basically have no idea how I'm going to decorate this room and how I want it to actually look. So give me a little bit of time. So we're probably about halfway done with this room or so. As you can see, it's a pretty simple room, a pretty standard layout for this kind of palette as well. Pretty similar to this room over here. We have the kind of, you know, containment unit thingies on the sides. And the plan with this is we're going to place down an actual tile here. So like, for example, we'd place down like a piece of bedrock there and a piece of bedrock maybe up there or maybe just on the lower part, whatever really works. And then maybe we'd also have one in, in like an item frame somewhere. And then maybe also like a lectern out here in the front with a written book for, you know, additional information about the actual block that is being studied. So we're going to have, you know, six of these things in total. I'm not sure how many actual, you know, tiles can be acquired in this game at the moment. I know of four. There might be more in future updates. There might be more in this current update. But we do need to get all of those because, you know, this is the only time we're going to get to actually get them all. So we definitely want to get as many as we possibly can. And I've been doing a little bit of fun stuff with the in rods as well. I'm going to have some more in rods in the corners as well. And then I'm not entirely sure how to actually finish up the walls. We might do something similar with the walls like how we did in the nether hub. So a couple layers of carpet, you know, push back the wall by a couple more blocks. I don't know. Just give it a little bit of depth. I definitely don't want to do walls similar to how we have in here. These are definitely just temporary walls because, you know, again, I kind of need to railroad this project to actually have it ready for Killadrone to join. Okay, so this room is actually pretty much done now. And if you can notice it, there is actually a difference. The right side of the room has the double layer of carpets, similar to how the nether hub house and the left side, it doesn't have any form of carpets at all. I'm kind of torn in between which one to do. I think they both look nice. This one is nice and clean, but this one uh, gives it a little bit extra depth. You know, it is kind of weird because these are like eye height and they're just a perfectly flat line going across. But then again, I also kind of like it. So there might be a pull on the upper left of the screen right now. Vote on which one you want to actually exist, if that's a thing that anyone cares about. So I suppose we'll fill in these tiles going from the front towards the back, starting off, of course, with bedrock. This stuff is very, very cool. And we're going to place our first ever piece of bedrock in pure vanilla survival on the truly bedrock realm. I haven't done anything with any of this bedrock, but... There it goes. <laughs> uh, that's, that's really cool. We're never going to be able to remove that now because it's actual literal bedrock. It's not a retexture or anything. Actual real bedrock. So that's cool. I hope I don't want to move that anytime soon because that'll be a pain. <laughs> and I guess we'll also go ahead and put our first ever portal tile over here as well. So there goes that. Oh man, it's facing the wrong way. Dang it. Well, I guess that just makes it look more illegal, doesn't it? You can actually go to the nether with this as well, by the way. It's a fully functional portal. You can't come back through to it, but you can go to the nether using it. And also, some of you are wondering what happens if you place these down in the end. If you place another portal tile down in the end, you go to the overworld, which is strange, but I mean, okay, whatever. Uh, so we actually need to get a bunch more of these because I don't have any more for the item frames and we need to get a bunch more bedrock as well. And right now we're going to build a little bit of farm back here in this right corner to actually get ourselves some bubble column tiles. So this little contraption right here should allow us to, in theory, farm bubble column tiles. 
So this is a pretty similar setup to how we actually got the nether portal tiles a couple of episodes ago. We basically want to, you know, have two blocks in the same spot at one time and then mine that block with a silk touch pickaxe. And in theory, we will get ourselves a bubble column tile. So we're going to be waterlogging that torch and then mining that torch right as the actual water gets retracted, which is what this little setup here is going to be for. Now, I haven't tried this out before, so let's see how this goes. We're going to walk forward, start mining get pushed over to the side and I don't think we got it that time we got to mine a little bit further to the side so I'm gonna be aiming a little bit like that boop and we didn't get that time either it might take a couple of tries there isn't too much realm lag at the moment oh there we go nice we actually got it tile dot bubble underscore column dot name very nice there used to be a lot more very strange column uh, you know, just tiles in general like this. Like, this is the first proper tile that we've gotten with a super strange name. And uh, this is really interesting. Can we place this down? We can. Is there anything actually there? I don't think there's anything actually there. Okay, so you might not be able to place it down and have it actually do anything. But it does... It is a placeable block. So I guess I'll go ahead and try and get a few more of those things. Oh, very strange. Huh. <laughs> I have no idea how or why, but I find that extremely amusing and I love it. <laughs> oh, and by the way, this little contraption right here is posted on Reddit by Eclectic Pack. I think I'm saying that right, but who knows? I am very, very good at butchering all of the names, and this thing actually works very reliably once you actually get the aim down. I have just done this a few times, and as you can see, we already got like 12 bubble column tiles. Very cool. Very, very cool indeed. Now, now, I want to try something. I want to remove this sea lantern right here, place down like a soul sand or something, and then place down a bubble column tile on top of that and see exactly what happens. I also want to grab an item frame. So this one's going to be for our bubble column tile dot names. Wow, that is broken. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's it's got little eyeballs. That's adorable. Anyway, place that down. Is that gonna do anything at all? No, it doesn't look like that's actually doing anything. Oh, mm, maybe, maybe not. These things are super easy to get, so I'm not worried about placing them down. Um, it doesn't look like anything's actually happening. Dang it, I was really hoping we would get something cool animated going on, like how we had over there. Okay, so these things actually look really cool when they're placed on the ground. Like, look at that, they're actually animated. That's really cool. And they look kind of just similar to the item frame when you're actually holding them. These things are awesome. I, I really love these. Oh, wow, that actually does look like a bubble column, doesn't it? <laughs> the animations are a little bit choppy, but that's fine. Anyway, I kind of really want to figure out how we had that one, like, quasi bubble, co bubble column thingy over here and kind of replicate that in this spot. So if I'm not mistaken, all we need to do is actually place the water on top of a magma block or a soul sand and then remove it with an observer. And then that should give us a quasi bubble column. Yeah, look at that. Huh. That's awesome, actually. I haven't done anything else besides do that little bit with you on camera. And I'm very curious if we actually log out of the game and then log back in, is it going to go away? And also, is it still there? Uh, yes, it is still there. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and log out of the realm and then log back into that thing. And I'm curious if it's going to disappear, if it's just like a client side thing. I hope it's a permanent thing because that would just be so, so very cool. Yes, it is. Okay, that's actually awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this game is so broken. It just like placing water and then removing it gives you a bubble column. That's invisible. That's amazing. Is it actually like real water? Hold on. Let's actually go ahead and like remove that. Uh, no, no water anywhere. Okay, very strange. Oh, but that did break that thing. Okay, so if you give it a block update, that's going to be a problem. Hmm, we can work with that. And there we go. We got ourselves a quasi bubble column tile. It's going to be there forever, hopefully. And that is just pretty awesome. Like, I, I seriously think that's really cool. And then we got our cursed nether portal over here as well. I have no idea where that button is going to end up. And we also have our bedrock too, which is really, really awesome. And I think this area is just super cool. Uh, next couple of episodes, I do want to get an in-city gateway tile because those are definitely going to be removed in the next update. So we got to act fast and we got to get those very quickly too. That requires a lot of chaos with summoning a wither inside of an in-city gateway way by doing it wrong and messing it up so we we'll have to fight some withers too uh but anyway we will get to that in a future update other than that that's gonna do it for
for today's episode of Truly Bedrock. I do hope that you have all enjoyed. Of course, if you have, be sure to leave a like on the videos as it does help out the video and the channel very, very much so. And thank you all very much for the support on this series as always. I will see you all down in the comment section and in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. And then there was silence.